Constitution. This document still serves us to this day. As our nation entered the 1800s, many of its citizens were the same of those who fought so hard to establish a new country. Naturally, they had great pride in the country they had just founded. 
when Great Britain again challenged us. The War of 1812 resulted. Historians will tell you that I decided I won the war. However, after having defeated the world's greatest power, this small nation considered it victory. During the war, a man by the name of Francis Scott Key was held prisoner aboard a ship during the bombing of Fort McHenry. Through the night, he watched our flag lit up by flares, which inspired him to write the words to his Star Spangled Banner. Will the audience please rise and join the Camp Walden staff in singing our national anthem? States of America. Rumors of the greatness of this nation spread to the people of Europe, and many of them immigrated to be part of it. The original 13 colonies quickly expanded to include Kentucky, Illinois, and the territories along the shores of the Mississippi. By the 1840s, many traveled west by wagon. Wagon wheels, wagon wheels, keep on a turning. Wagon wheels, roll along, sing your song, carry me over the hill. Others found it easier to travel by flatboat down the Ohio River. Sometimes. 
conduct, law, and the disposition of the people as they trudge across America's 3,000 miles. From the hot summers of plains, the harsh winters of the Rockies, and the endless deserts out west. Some left safe and secure jobs in the east for the unknown possibilities of the west. They were a people with the determination to survive and the willingness to endure. With the great migration of 1850s came the laying of the railroad and the legend of John Henry. It was a reflection of the people who worked on the early railroad. When John Henry was the lady, huh, sitting on his daddy's knee, the lady picked up a hammer and a little piece of steel said, Hammer, be that me, Lord, Lord, hammer, be that me. When John Henry was the lady, huh, sitting on his daddy's knee, the lady picked up a hammer and a little piece of steel said, Hammer, be that me, Lord, Lord, hammer, be that me. By 1855, we have cities on both the East Coast and the West. But it seemed as though our country had grown too fast, for many citizens began calling themselves Northerners and Southerners instead of Americans. Each side pitted itself against the other. The North, with its self-righteous goal of freeing the slaves, and the South, with its overwhelming pride and tradition.
conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaging in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We have come here to dedicate a portion of that field to those who gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow these grounds. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world may little note, no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated to the work which they who fought here so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take an increased measure of devotion to that which they gave their last full measure of devotion, and that we highly resolve that these men shall not have died in vain, and that our nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and our government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. When the conflict was over, neither side had won. The Americans had won, for there remained a country of the United States. During the war, a change came over the people. They adopted a machine-like activity and began to industrialize the nation. With steel, its backbone, and industry, its heart, we entered the 1900s like this, suddenly becoming a world power, but an isolationist one. Nevertheless, by 1914, European conflict had reached such a magnitude that it began to affect this country's activity. Like the people before, the people of this country would not be re restricted, and so we entered World War I. Over the hill, over the hill, as we hit the dusty trail, as those caissons go rolling along. Now we march right about, hear those wagon soldiers shout, as those caissons go rolling along. For it's high, high knee in the field artillery, call out your numbers loud and strong. One, two, and wherever we go, they will always know that those caissons go rolling along. Keep them rolling, as those caissons go rolling along. As those caissons go rolling along. We emerged out of the war a great world power, but we refused to accept this responsibility. We withdrew our men arms and, and began to build ourselves up as we had done once before. We entered the gay times of the 20s and the great depression of the 30s. Some people faced a depressed economic situation that affected their families, their communities, and their nation. Some Americans were left homeless and hungry. President Franklin D. Roosevelt comforted the people by saying, the only thing to fear is fear itself. A federal program called the New Deal eventually lifted the economy. We left these times only to find that the world's troubles had mounted in such a way that our peace, our democracy, and our whole way of life was once again being threatened. On December 7, 1941, Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, resulting in the injury or death of over 4,000 Americans. The next day, Congress declared war, and the U.S. entered World War II. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun.
Vietnam, Kuwait, Afghanistan, and Iraq marked a sometimes turbulent era as the United States assumed a new complex role in the defense of democracy. At this time, we would like all members of the United States Armed Forces, past and present, to please stand and be recognized for their dedication to our great country. Blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. 
I was conceived in liberty, and God willing, in liberty, I shall spend the rest of my days. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 